On this edition of WPRP, we take a look at a proposal that would seek to improve our football field. We try to find out why our weather has been unusually warm for this time of year. And we will see if students are keeping up with their New Year's resolutions. WPRP, WPRP starts now. And I'm Edward Smith. PRP's football field is dry and dead right now, but a proposal gaining support could flip its current condition into one with a lengthy list of benefits. Having a turf field has become the norm at schools across the country, and at PRP, it could soon be a reality. We believe that a turf field in our community would expand opportunities for our kids in our area. We have countless sports and activities that you would use it. Our band has a regional competition every year. Our football team, of course, would use it. Our field hockey team, which went to the state tournament last year and is growing quickly, needs a turf field. It would be a big task to redo the field, but the benefits it would incorporate are indisputable. There's more accessibility to, to, to play on the field. We have a baseball infield that is turf. Our baseball team uh, is able to practice when it snows, they're able to practice when it rains, they're able to practice and play more games, they have less rainouts. Uh, with a turf football field, um, that would expand to every outdoor sport that we have. It's not just PRP's administration that sees the turf field as a plus, but also the ones who will be playing on it. I've been here for four years, and I know countless amount of times where we couldn't practice because it was raining. A turf field would eliminate that completely. Uh, we wouldn't have to worry about the mud, slipping, sliding, ruining the footballs. Having a turf field would be awesome. It would help us compete uh, more in the same level with a more affluent schools in our area who all have turf fields. Additionally, having the field would contribute to PRP's relationships with other area schools. Well, we value the partnership with PRP, and so the turf field would allow more students after school to uh, enjoy the extracurricular activities, especially soccer. Last year, through my knowledge, we've had several students that could not play because they didn't have access. Turf fields would definitely catch us up, you know, because when we go to play other schools, their facilities are better. And this gives us an opportunity to improve our facility um, and improve it in for a large community of people. After further review, that proposal is still pending. And even though it's not the season for football, some days it has been warm enough to feel like it. Our weatherman Caleb tried to figure out why we saw such an abnormal strand of warmer weather. The talk of the town the first half month of January was all about the weather. Why is it so warm? Why haven't we had a snow day yet? We reached out to Wave 3 meteorologists Kevin Harned and Brian Good for more answers. Uh, very unusual warm weather here. While well, it's been very cold, really cold actually, in Alaska. So our weather here locally has featured nothing but heavy rain, thunderstorms, a lot of wind, and of course we had the record high. So a lot of us have just been talking about how it's uh, been a trend we've seen actually the past, uh, I would say, 10 years or so. We've noticed that January has always had a tough time getting right into the core of winter. It seems like it always takes till mid to late January to really see winter show up. We've run into this the past several years where you start to run into uh, some of the trees will start blooming early. Some of the bulbs will come out of the ground. I know Atlanta, Georgia, the daffodils are already coming out of the ground. So there is certainly a risk to the spring flowers that are 
Certainly get fooled a little more by the warmer weather, and then when you get into a free scenario, uh, it can do damage to them. Now, ironically, the saving grace to protect those uh, trees and flowers would be snowfall, because snow actually, when it coats uh, a bloom, uh, and it on a blooming plant, it actually protects them from freezing weather. We see, again, that flow come straight in from Canada instead of California. How long will that last? That's a good question. Right now, it looks like at least through Groundhog Day in February, and maybe even a, just a tad bit longer, but it does look like winter is probably going to be in, end up being a, a shorter one than usual this year, which means uh, if you're a big fan of cold weather and snow, you better enjoy the next couple of weeks, because this may be it. You know, this is a big fog is how warm it's been. We've been 10 to 15, in some cases over the weekend, record high. Temperature departure from the world is extremely high. The winter is young. And did it ever get cold? It's been mostly in the 20s and 30s this past week. It will be warming up. We'll be up to 53 on Wednesday. But apart from that, we won't be warming much. It's going to stay pretty cold. No snow, but we're going to have some rain. Signing off for WPRP Weather, I'm Caleb Martinez. Thanks, Caleb. Disappointing the warm weather didn't last long. Speaking of not lasting long, on average, only 8% of people keep up with their New Year's resolutions. I wonder how PRP students are meeting their goals this year. I'm Alyssa Van Diver, I'm in the 10th grade. Zeke, and I'm in 12th grade. Dean Ragger, 11th grade. Hi, I'm Jade, and I'm a senior. How do you plan to keep up with your New Year's resolution? Um, just to stay focused. Just gonna stay focused. Um, and just do what I gotta do. Uh, practice more. Well, my New Year's resolutions were pretty simple, so I made it where I could easily accomplish them. I want to keep up with my New Year's resolution by studying hard and keeping Keep up my resolution by staying with the guys and keeping up with the bros. I'm keeping uh, up with my New Year's resolution by staying focused and just staying on my grind. I plan to keep up with my New Year's resolution. Uh, stay focused. Uh, keep getting money. You know, the usual, man. We have more stories to come. But first, we are going to take a break and watch a short film on our environmental science club. We'll be right back. Our graphic design department has been hard at work this year. Our correspondents went to check it out. The graphic design pathway here at PRP has been evolving in many ways and is helping students prepare for the real world. We have added to the graphic design pathway, we've added a universal laser cutter, and that's a cutter that will cut in various materials. Recently, in the graphic design pathway, Mr. Willis had his students create an eight-foot-tall portrait of Martin Luther King Jr. I had my digital imaging class do the portrait of Martin Luther King. The way we worked that is that we, we did the math and then had each student do a section or a sector um, so we could e everybody print it, each sector on a um, letter size piece of paper. It's eight feet, um, eight foot tall. And then in my um, um, intro class, um, they did a timeline. And they're kind of far away. It, it, it looks just like a, a normal image, but when you get up close, it's just um, each pixel is uh, one inch tall. I've been in the graphic design pathway for the last three years. The pathway means a lot to me because I decided that I was going to pursue a degree in graphic design 
The program has prepared me for the real world because it has taught me how to deal with actual clients and it has taught me how to work through a design process in order to make my client happy. We would like to advance our program by having more project-based learning opportunities and connecting with industry partners and then creating some co-op opportunities. Now we're going to transition to our sports segment. Let's check out how our teams have been playing this week. What's going on, PRP? I'm Blaze Dees. And I'm Reese Oger. So last week, Clemson and LSU played in the college football championship. LSU won that game 42-25 to with Joe Burrow throwing for over 400 yards and five total touchdowns. This upcoming weekend will be the 50th annual Pro Bowl held in Orlando, Florida. Now, we all know the Pro Bowl has a lot to do with popularity, but players like Devontae Parker, Jameis Winston, and Josh Jacobs undoubtedly should be there. But on the other side, Players like Kirk Cousins, Von Miller, and Khalil Mack should not be attending the Pro Bowl. Now let's talk about the Super Bowl. All right, so we're going to start off with the tight end matchup. So the Chiefs have Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends in the league right now. He has 97 receptions, 1,229 yards, and he has five touchdowns. On the other side, San Francisco has George Kittle, putting up 85 receptions, 1,053 yards, and five touchdowns as well. But what I'm looking at is their schemes. So if you look at San Francisco's scheme, the blocking scheme, right? George Kittle is one of the best blocking tight ends in the league, and he's still putting up these numbers. Considering that how they run and how they run their offense through the play action, he's going to get a lot of space opened up deep into the game, faking the run. On the other side, Kansas City, they have more explosive offense, so they like to pass a lot more. With their running side, not as heavy, but the passing plays that they make, they're big plays. So if they get Travis Kelsey open on a deep route, he's going to make a difference. Now let's talk about this quarterback matchup. Now me being a quarterback myself, this is very home to me. We have Jimmy Garoppolo on the 49ers and Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs. Jimmy G has played 16 games with a QBR of 102. 69% completion, 3,978 yards, 27 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. But the downside to the 49ers and Jimmy G is they have allowed 65 sacks. Mahomes, on the other hand, has a QBR of 108.9, 65% completion, 4,031 yards, 26 touchdowns, but only five interceptions. He only allowed 17 sacks. So these are both two quarterbacks that's put up a lot of yards, throwing a lot of touchdowns. Not throwing a crazy amount of interceptions, but they both turn the ball over. But that sack difference mm -hmm. is crazy. Like this offense, the offensive line difference from the Chiefs to the 49ers is substantial. To win this game, the Chiefs have to have a huge pass attack. I mean, they have explosive players everywhere. They have the speed. Mom, they have I'm gonna height. Stop, I'm going to stop you there, right? All right, 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 right. You're, you're going to talk their explosiveness, but San Francisco's defense, they rush with four. They do. They but, don't need to bring seven. But They don't stack the box. That they Chiefs just offensive have line is one of the best in the league right now. They're playing at, at a tandem. They're, I don't think they're, they're going to be better than their, their line, though. So, in my, so, the way I see it, the Chiefs are going to have to play quick. They're going to have to wear them down, no huddle. They're going to have to pass the ball quick, and they're going to have to get their run game involved. That's the only way they're going to be able to do it. The Chiefs' run game has been their staple of the year. It's always been the pass game. Patrick Mahomes only is allowed 17 sacks because he creates time. Even when their great offense line breaks down, he's creating seconds and seconds to create plays down the field with Tyree Kill and Miko Hardman and Sammy Watkins and Travis Kelsey. They have crazy talent on the field. So if he can create the time, the offense like to do the job. I think the Chiefs come out here with the win. But if you look at it, their defense, again, we don't even have to talk about the line. We can talk about the secondary. Right. You want to talk about their offensive numbers, but everyone's going to have a good matchup. If, if we talk secondary, the only person you have to worry about is Richard Sherman. Everybody else is old and slow. They have length. You can't let they have the length, but they, they can, don't match up with the speed. They got a couple first-rounders in there. But, but they're not running with Ty, the Tyreek Hills and Miko Harbins of the league. They're not. But if they're playing a deep coverage, you got to get the run involved. That's my point. Right. They're not. They they're going into this game understanding that they're going to throw the ball more than anyone else. Right. So if they get the run involved, hit them with a couple play actions after the run, you're going to open up a lot of space there. Even hit them with a couple jet sweeps. You get Tyreek already running. Right. Breaks out into the flat. Easy 20 yard gain. I see what you're saying. You're saying this should be a great matchup. I can't wait. Congratulations to the dance team on becoming grand champs, and congratulations to our very own Maurice Sojo on committing to Kentucky Wesleyan College. 
Good luck to the bowling team and the archer team this weekend. The bowling team will have regionals and the archer team will have their invitationals. PRP, we need all hands on deck to get the petition signed to save our field hockey team. I'm Blaze Dees. And I'm Marie Soja. This is Rich Sports. That will do it for this show. We thank you for joining us and we hope to see you back here next time.